guys? It's Kenny Zoom, another murder for you guys, and this is my reviewing. This is another movie that, just like Brigsby Bear, I really was not sure if I was actually going to get the chance to see. But finally, I have. Well, I, I shouldn't say finally because it only came out like a couple weeks ago, but it did come to my theater, and I'm very happy that I got to see it. And that, of course, is Taylor Sheridan's next big film, Wind River. So, Wind River is basically about, uh, basically it takes place in Wind River, Wyoming, which is a real Indian reservation that is actually a real place, and it's actually roughly based on true events. I don't know if this actual story is true, but like I said, it is based on, um, true events. Um, but basically there is this teenage girl that is, um, found dead in the snow. She's not wearing the proper attire for the type of climate, um, and things like that, and there's definitely a lot of red flags that this definitely was some sort of homicide and things like that, and the wildlife service agent, uh, Corey Lambert, he's called in to investigate this murder, and he has familiar ties um, to this girl that was murdered, which again, I will not get into, but basically him and this FBI agent, uh, Banner, they have to come together to try to figure out, uh, how this girl was murdered and, you know, who the culprit is and things like that. And that's the basic plot overall. So Wind River, uh, like I said, I went into this movie not really knowing a ton. Yes, I watched that trailer, but it wasn't one of those trailers that really did stick with me. It was a trailer, I'm like, all right, that was a great trailer. Do I remember it? No, I, I really don't. Why? Because I watched over like 50 other trailers and it was not one of the more memorable ones. It was one that I said, all right, it's a good trailer, but I just didn't really remember it. And honestly, I wasn't too upset about that. I like to go into movies knowing as little as possible. You guys know this. I did it with Brigsby Bear and you guys know how well that turned out for me. So I really did not go into this movie knowing a ton. All I knew is that Taylor Sheridan was behind, again, besides that trailer, which I really did not remember, um... All I knew is that Taylor Sheridan was behind it, and that was enough of a reason to really sell me. He has been making some incredible films lately, and I'm happy to report that Wind River just adds to the canon of great films for him. This was a fantastic movie. It's not at all an easy watch, just like Sheridan's other films. There are definitely some very hard scenes to watch in this movie, but I definitely really did love what we got here. I think it is an incredible film overall that... It's definitely one that I recommend uh, you see as soon as you can, but let's just get into this movie starting off with the cast. So here's the thing with the cast in this movie. Uh, while everyone does a really great job, there really are only three people to talk about because the other actors and actors in this movie, while in it, they're not really in the movie all that much. It's really only these three actors um, that I can talk about. But we have to talk about Jeremy Renner as this character of Corey Lambert because... Look, I've always loved Jeremy Renner. I really have. I don't think I've seen him really give a bad performance in a movie. I think he always does a really great job, uh, whether it's something, you know, like Mission Impossible or, of course, Hawkeye or even his role in Arrival, which really wasn't anything that big. He's always done a really great job. Um, and I think he, you know, like I said, in those movies, he was great. This might be my favorite performance from him, though. He was incredible in this movie. The character of Corey Lambert is a very somber one. You can tell that he's got this really dark sort of emotion in him, but he kind of represses it. He never lets it come out. He, he somehow finds a way to just keep it inside, but you know that there definitely is something inside him, and when you eventually find out what that something is, because as I said, he does have some sort of, um, you know, he does have some sort of connection to this murder, and when you find out what that is, it not only makes you feel worse for his character, but it further enhances most of his previous actions. I mean, he did an incredible job in this movie. I really love what he did here, and he has some scenes in this movie that definitely are very hard to watch, but he's very restrained in the way he does do things. He doesn't have that one, like, big breakdown Oscar-winning scene, but at the same time, I could very well see him get nominated for this movie. He really is just that good, and I really do think that Renner is on the precipice of something truly great. Sure, he's had some great movies here and there, but I think after this movie, he's definitely going to start to get more recognition, and I really hope that's the case, because he was absolutely incredible here. And then Elizabeth Olsen in this movie as Jane Banner. Now, she's not nearly as complex of a character as Corey Lambert, but she still is a really great character. You know, she's not one known in that regard. She is this, you know, FBI agent that really is not used to this kind of climate at all. 
and seeing her try to acclimate to it is definitely one of the hardest parts of the movie because she's very emotional and a lot of things really do get to her as it should i mean the things that she really does see in this movie uh, it, it's hard to move on from. It really is. And especially the information that she's provided. It isn't easy stuff to take in, but she has to do this kind of stuff. And she did, again, some really great work here. And their chemistry is spot on. I mean, these two really do calm each other quite nicely. I really love seeing these two work together. There's no romance, romantic chemistry or anything, which I was happy about. If you guys were worried about that, that's not a romantic chemistry thing. It's just these two working together. And I thought these two did great work. I really did love what we got from the two of them. And again, Elizabeth Olsen, this really has been her year. I mean, she has been giving some amazing performances and add Wind River to that list. I mean, she's done some great work. I'm going to see her again in another movie later this week, but she really was great here. And I can't wait to see what else she does because, again, this is definitely one of my favorite performances from her without a doubt. And then really the only person I can talk about, because everyone else, like I said, while they're in the movie, they don't really have that large of a role, is Gil Birmingham in this movie as the character of Martin Hansen. And his character is truly tragic because he is the father of Natalie. Natalie is the girl that um, was killed in this snow. And he is going through a very similar type of tragedy to what Lambert's going through. Again, I'm not going to get into it, but the way these two really do help each other is one of the best parts of the movie. Um, you know, the way that they really are going through similar paths, and they've had very similar instances, and I, I just really loved seeing that, especially seeing Martin. You know, he's really grieving over his daughter. It makes him do things that he probably wouldn't do if he wasn't in this place. You know, he's in a very somber place, and it just, it does a lot to him. And again, I think he did a really great job. It's really heavy material, but Birmingham really goes for it. Again, he doesn't have that big breakdown scene, but he really does go for it. And I really was impressed with what he did here. Now let's get to the directing and the writing, because like I said to you guys, even without seeing that trailer, that's the thing that would have intrigued me about this film. Taylor Sheridan has really proved over these last few years that he really knows how to direct a movie. And sure, he's only directed one movie before. He's written, you know, both Sicario and Hell or High Water, but both of those movies are such simple concepts that go completely off the rails in these crazy directions, but not off the rails in, like, a bad way. They just, you know, they start off really calm, and then they get insane, and Wind River is like that, but it's probably the most somber film he's done of the three, because... Without saying anything, this movie does not have the, you know, don't expect the wits that Hell or High Water did. Don't expect all that comedy and things like that. This movie is not like that. It's definitely closer to Sicario than it is to um, Hell or High Water. And maybe even more, um somber than Sakara because even Sicario did have a few bright spots here and there with Josh Brolin's character. There's really not a lot of time in Wind River to breathe. There's really not. I mean, what the characters are dealing with here, it's a very serious situation. This isn't a simple open and shut case. This is a very dangerous uh, thing, and they're really on some very dangerous ground, and you definitely do see that throughout the movie. And again, the way Sheridan directs that, it's not overly dramatic or anything like that. It just feels very natural. Like, this is how these characters would be in this situation, especially given what Jeremy Renner's character has been through and what Gil Birmingham's character has been through, and also how inexperienced Elizabeth Olsen is in this climate, factor all those things into there, you can totally understand why the movie is so somber, and there's not really a lot of people cracking jokes. And sure, there might be some moments here and there, but don't expect this movie to have a lot of levity to it, because it's really not like that. And so maybe the third act has a few moments like that, but there really are not many moments there. So this is definitely a harder movie to watch, and out of the three movies Taylor Sheridan has done, it probably is his hardest to watch easily. And that's mainly due to the writing, which is easily one of the best screenplays of the year. I mean, the way he writes his movies are infectious. He does an incredible job. He takes characters that could be so one note, and he makes them so much more human. And that's something I love about all his movies. All his characters, they feel like humans. They really do. They don't feel like movie characters. They feel like real-life people. I can't recall a single moment in Sicario, Hell or High Water, or Wind River where the characters had the big breakdown scene. None of them did. You know, Emily Blunt did not have in Sicario. Uh, Jeff Bridges did not have in Hell or water. You kept waiting for it to come out, but it just doesn't happen. Why? That stuff doesn't happen in real life. That's not the way people react to things. The way people react to things in this movie is very natural and 
it feels like this is how this situation would really go, and I think he wrote that very well. And again, the way the characters are developed as well, especially Jeremy Renner's, it happens very slowly. And if I had to complain one thing about the movie is that I will admit the first 15 or 20 minutes, I wasn't that into it. I really wasn't. It wasn't until the actual murder case got started. I'm like, all right, now I'm locked into this movie. Uh, I just... I don't know, those first 15 or 20 minutes just kind of dragged a little bit for me. Other than that, I think the writing was definitely on point. And the other thing I loved about this movie is how, what, you know, what Sheridan's really tackling here. He's tackling this culture that's not really represented very much at all. Uh, you know, the Indian Reservation, the Wind River Indian Reservation is one of the worst places you could ever go to. I mean, it is ridded with crime, uh, just constantly all kinds of terrible shit happening there and the things that happen in this movie are only one of the many instances. And like I said, this is based on true events. So you definitely can tell that Sheridan did his research with that kind of stuff. Because if you look up things that happen in Wind River, it is pretty similar to what actually happens in this movie. And this movie was definitely a lot crazier than I expected to be. There are a lot of very suspenseful scenes. There's, like I said, some really hard stuff to watch. There's this incredible shootout in the third act of the movie that just kind of came out of nowhere. But it really did heighten the tension very well. And especially a twist, and I was very shocked where the movie went, but it went in this place that I really did not expect it to go, and it pulled it off really well. And without spoiling anything, um, the actual reason for the whole, you know, Natalie's murder, what actually did happen to her, it's not hard, it's, it's not easy to watch, I will say that. It's definitely a very hard watch, but it didn't come off as cliche. It could have easily come off that way, but again, when you factor into how people are treated at the Wind River Indian Reservation, it's very similar to what this character really does experience. It made a lot of sense, actually, because at first I was kind of like, eh, I, I kind of saw that coming, but then they put this text on the screen at the end of the movie that's like, you know, all these kind of investigations happen, but most people don't know what happens to uh, Native American type, you know, of girls, and I think it's just, it really has a lot to say about that, and it's not overly preachy at all, and I love the way that that was done here. Also, this movie has what might be my favorite, one of, what might be, one of, well, easily one of my favorite things the entire year. I don't know if it's one of my favorites, if it, I mean, if it is my favorite, but it definitely is one of my favorites the entire year. It ended perfectly, and I was very impressed with the way things did go. The cinematography here is fantastic. You feel the cold atmosphere sphere of this movie tonally and literally because obviously they are in snow but the entire movie is you know it's shot in a way where it feels like you are on this you know you're you're in this very uh cold just very frigid weather with them. You constantly feel it. And, I mean, it's it's summer right now, but I genuinely was feeling it in the movie. You could tell how bad this... Um climate really is, especially, like I said, for Elizabeth Olsen, who's just really not used to this at all. I mean, she's not from this area, and I think there was something that, again, was really interesting, and I, you know, she's just an FBI agent. I, I, you know, she's, of course, from Las Vegas. She's just not used to this kind of thing, and I think they use that also very well. The score here uh, is also something I have to talk about, because the score, it's so haunting and mysterious, and it just perfectly puts you into that very um, unsettling atmosphere that the movie really does have. Like I said, this is not a pleasant movie. It's very unsettling. It's very disturbing stuff. And the score really captures that very well. It's one of those scores where you're listening to it and you know something's going to happen and you're waiting for it to happen. And when it does, oh my god, is the payoff good. And especially when you find out, like I said, what happened to Natalie, what ends up happening to the person that's culpable for that was incredible. I mean, it, it was so badass. I love the way it was pulled off. Badass is the wrong word, but the payoff was incredibly well done. I mean, definitely was very rewarding, and uh, especially when you saw what this poor girl went through, you, you really do... Um, you're, you're really rooting for Jeremy Renner in that regard. I thought they did an incredible job with that. I really did love that, too. And like I said, the ending to this movie, I did feel the movie was a little bit long in the first 15 to 20 minutes, but other than that, I really don't have many complaints that I think at once they got into the case, the movie flowed perfectly. It was the perfect length. It didn't need to be any longer or shorter than it is. It's basically around the same length as Taylor Sheridan's other movies, and I don't think it needed to be any shorter or longer than it really was.
just like Taylor Sheridan's other films, I do want to quickly dive into spoilers because I really just want to give you guys my opinion on the way things did in fact turn out here. So if you haven't seen One River, just go away for a second. Then you can come back once you see, um, you know, once you go to the timestamp, you can just, you know, watch it then. But either way, let's just dive into it because as I said, uh, Corey was a very intriguing character. He really was. From the second he's introduced you know he's in some sort of pain. You know there's definitely something that's just, there's something not right about him. You know, he's hanging out with his son and things seem okay, but he just has this, you know, really dark sort of, you know, um, way of thinking, and you don't know what it really is all about. Why is he acting this way? And then he starts dropping hints about this girl, and you're like, who is she? I mean, the second that he started saying things, um all about, you know, Emily. I'm like, who, who the hell's Emily? Who is this? And it just, that's really what pulled me in. Like I said, the first 15 or 20 minutes weren't the best. I think that's really what pulled me in, was finding out more details about this character of Natalie. And then it's eventually revealed that Natalie not only is his dead daughter, who we are to assume was actually raped in this, you know, part. At least that's kind of what I got from it. It was like a date rape thing, because, you know, he even said, I, I don't even know what happened to her. She just, she was at a party, and then the next day he gets a call that she's dead. So I think you can kind of put two and two together in that way. Um... But not only that, but she was actually best friends with Natalie, and that twist was incredible. It's easily one of my favorite twists of the year because it recontextualizes everything about Lambert's story. It really does. I mean, you start off the movie and you think, all right, he definitely has some involvement in this, but you don't realize how personal this really is for him and how he, in a way, is sort of getting vengeance, not just for Natalie, but for his daughter. You really do feel that in this, and uh, Natalie... Natalie was very important to him. Natalie was someone that he probably knew very well. In fact, he probably had a, a very good relationship with Natalie. And it's just, when you find out his involvement, it just really gives, you know, it increases the urgency. You, you know, you want him to find this guy and just do whatever he can to him. And, uh, then of course it's revealed that is very similar situation happened with Natalie. And like I said, at first, when I saw that it was rape, I'm like, oh, of course it's rape, you know, they couldn't have found some other way, but again, this is based on true events, and this kind of stuff does happen a lot, where, you know, girls who are of Native American descent in the Wind River Indian Reservation are very much mistreated, and no one really says anything about it, and that's really what Sheridan's really trying to do. He's portraying this group of people that just aren't really represented a lot, and that's something I really did love seeing here. Again, not that I love seeing, I don't love seeing people get raped, obviously, that's very hard stuff to watch, um... I just thought it was really good the way he's shedding some light on this native group of people that just, like I said, are very much, uh, re you know, mis they're not really represented in that way. And I think there was something that was really well done. And then the end of the movie where you do see he, of course, you know, he goes up to, uh, oh, also, we, we don't know. There's also this second body, which I thought was interesting. We didn't find out who that second body was. And again, it just goes into the whole idea of, you know, not knowing anything about these Native Americans um, you know, the, these Native American people, how they're one, they, they, you know, like they go missing all the time and no one really pays attention to. That's kind of what I think that part was shedding some light on. But then we get to the end of the movie and seeing Lambert take down, um, Chip, you know, the person that, well, actually, what was his name? I can't think of his name right now, but the person that, you know, um, abused Natalie was so rewarding. I love the way that was done. I think it was such a satisfying scene, just seeing him take him, Pete, that was his name, seeing him take down Pete was incredible, and especially the way he got, he then uncuffed him, and he told him to run, but Pete's like, I can't go anywhere. I'm like, all right, this is awesome. Some of the best payoff I have seen in any movie easily. I love the way that was done. Um, but then you get to the end of the movie and you kind of realize that Martin's never really going to be the same again. I mean, he's lost his daughter and it's a lot. But what I love about the movie is that it ends very similar to how Hell or High Water ends, where you think there's going to be this massive rivalry between, you know, Jeff Bridges and between 
uh, Chris Pine. You think, you know, these two are going to gun at each other, or there's going to be this huge fight, but it's not that. They actually just try to, ref they're, they're reflecting on, you know, their losses, and that's kind of what happened here. Now, obviously, Lambert and Martin are not out for blood, you know, as much as they were in Hell or High Water, but they do have very similar backgrounds, and seeing Corey learn that Hanson actually was going to kill himself, but then he got this call that actually saved him, uh, it's just really crazy to hear about, but again, it really puts into perspective his character and really what Martin went through and realizing that this is just kind of how they live and they're going to have to live with these losses for the rest of their life. They don't want to, but at least they do have each other to comfort. I just thought it was a very endearing ending. I love the way things ended there. And again, it really just was the perfect ending for the movie. I think they wrapped up things perfectly and the text at the end of the screen where it says like, you know, um, so many bodies are found, but there's so many Native American girls that no one even hears about and nothing's investigated and things like that. Again, it's just really putting the message into perspective. It didn't feel, you know, I think they could have easily made that, like, not subtle at all, but it felt very subtle. Like, it felt like they were showing that this is really what the movie is about. You know, what you saw, this stuff happens. This is not, you know, just a movie. This is real life. This stuff happens, and I think they portrayed that in the perfect way here, and I definitely did love the way it was wrapped up. Like I said, easily one of my favorite endings of the year by far. So overall, guys, Wind River is another incredible entry from Taylor Sheridan. It has some of the best performance of the year easily. It's, again, very hard to watch. It's not something where you watch it and, you know, um, you want to watch it again. It's definitely not a movie I'd say I'd want to watch again immediately because it's just, it's a lot to digest. It really is, and it's a very hard movie to watch at points, but it is absolutely worth the watch. It is something that I really did love. I think, again, Taylor Sheridan is just really proof how impressive of a writer and now director he really is now this is not his directorial debut he actually directed another movie that I heard of a lot of people don't consider his official directorial debut but this is like his like official directorial debut and again it's it's a great directorial debut absolutely but Either way, guys, I absolutely love Wind River. Aside from those, that little nitpick I have in the first 15 or 20 minutes, this is another incredible entry from Taylor Sheridan. For me, it's like right below Sicario, and I am absolutely going to give it whatever surprisingly the same exact grade I give Sicario, which is, of course, an A. So overall, guys, in my review, Wind River. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie overall. Love your thoughts on it. Like I said, not at all an easy movie to watch, but definitely something I do recommend you guys check out. Uh, but that's it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for Twin Peaks The Return. I know I am one episode behind, but I do plan on catching up so I can watch tonight's episode, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.